Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Chart of Accounts Valid UDO Organization Combinations and Cross-Validation Rules webinar. My name is Ernie DeSandro. I'll be one of the hosts in this particular webinar. Before we get started, I wanted to point out that all callers have been placed on mute. If you have a question, please send it via the chat function, which will monitor throughout the meeting and answer your questions during the session. For those of you unfamiliar and you're looking at the Cisco WebEx Meeting Center, on the top ribbon on the right-hand side, there's an icon for chat. You click on that chat and it will expose that box. And then just as a reminder, um, it may default to where it says send to at the bottom of that chat box. Please select send to everyone so that folks can, so that we can see your chat question. And we'll take periodic breaks in between um, our uh, deliverables here um, to stop for, to answer those questions. All right, so we'll also have time for questions and answers at the end of the meeting. For those of you who are curious, we are recording this webinar and a copy of the presentation will be posted on the University Controller's website by the end of the week. Also, we'll remind you at the end, uh, for those of you who were able to register for the webinar, there will be a survey sent out to you. Um, we ask that you do complete the survey. It actually helps us um, you know, uh, improve our processes. Um, for the folks who may have registered as a conference room or where there may be more than one person actually um, uh, watching the WebEx, if you could send an email to Renee Hagwood, that's RH550, at finance.rutgers.edu with the list of attendees and we'll make sure you get credit uh, for attending and then also send you the survey. The survey will also be available on the University of Controllers website. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about some of the agenda. Our, uh, we'll start with the Chart of Accounts Initiative background um, and then we'll proceed through uh, the Chart of Accounts segment review, um, talk to you about valid unit division organization combinations and then present other cross-validation rules. Again, the host for today's session is myself, Ernie DeSandro, and I'm going to be joined by Sue Heleno, who's a manager and chart of accounts lead in our governance office. For a little bit of background, after working in the chart of accounts for more than a year and hearing about difficulties staff, faculty, and central administration are experiencing with its use, we are developing ways to better serve the university through chart of accounts changes, improve controls and education, guidance, support, and policies to ensure the best use of the chart of accounts. For those of you who have attended the chart of accounts open forums, this slide will look very familiar to you. We wanted to lay that out as our reminder that our goal is to improve how we support our operations by making the chart of accounts simpler to use, ensuring the data are accurate and easily reportable across the university, and making certain that the project ledger interacts seamlessly with the general ledger. For a little background, the chart was developed with maximum flexibility to provide the university the opportunity to report as each unit saw fit. Unfortunately, as a university, we could not handle that flexibility. It allowed the users to enter chart at any chart string, purposely or unintentionally, which led to the creation of thousands of invalid chart string combinations. Currently, we are not following best practices due to lack of documentation on standard transactions, inconsistent use of the chart, and lack of clarity on how the university should be using the project subledger. So we're using this as one of the education areas to make sure that we can get started on improving our processes. Let's go over a few dates to remember. On May 7th, 
Um, we are going to implement rules in RU Marketplace and PeopleSoft to ensure only valid UDOs are used with the new transactions. Also on May 7th, for RU Marketplace and PeopleSoft users, you must use valid UDOs. And we will show you how to ensure that the UDO you are using is valid. Cross-validation rules, or CVRs as we call them, uh, will be an oracle for monitoring only on May 7th. This will not prevent journal entries, project cost transactions, or expense reports from processing. Then on June 30th, monitoring and testing for all CVRs continues through this date. We'll provide exception reporting and identify chart string combinations in violation of any of the rules. On July 1st, in all systems, you will be prevented from using invalid UDOs and invalid full chart string combinations. Again, the purpose of this webinar is to show you how to make sure you're using the right chart of accounts under these new rules. And for all users, we recommend that you start using valid full chart string combinations now so that you can get accustomed to using them before July 1st. Before we move on to the next segment, we'll pause for questions, and I will, we'll be monitoring the chat room. And I don't see any questions. Okay, so let's hand it off to you and let's get started with where to find these resources. Hi everyone, good morning, this is Sue Heleno and I will be taking you through the rest of the presentation today. I want to draw your attention to the University Controller's website. Um, there's a lot of good information here and there will be three files that you will need to use when you're trying to figure out any kind of cross-validation error. Uh, whether it be a UDO or a non-UDO error. Um, so you want to go out to the controller's website here and under um, chart of account initiative, you would want to click on that box. The next page that comes up on your left hand side shows resources. Now there's a lot of files in this resource. There's a nice job aid. Um, on the CVRs that are, is out there to help you, but it's further down on the list. Um, what I want to draw your attention to are these three files, and I suggest that you either have them opened on your, on your desktop or print them out and have them at the ready um, just in case you get an error in the system. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what these files look like. Um, we have the chart of a segment values that are updated monthly um, for all the segments. We have the valid and invalid UDO file, which is updated, um, I want to say, as soon as we get a new valid UDO, and uh, the cross-validation rules. So bear with me as I bring up the different screens. Okay, I'm sure everyone's seen this file before, it's our, it's our uh, segment values by um, segment, okay? So you have your unit, they're all in Excel format. You have division, organization, location, so on and so forth. You have the business line definitions, which is a good, a very good tool to have when you're, when you're transacting. You have the account segment broken up by balance sheet and P&L. They're very easy to use. You can filter on any value. You can filter on any description or word. Um, and like I said, this is updated monthly and it's on the controller's website. The second file I want to bring your attention to is the valid invalid UDOs. This is very user-friendly Excel format. What you can do is you can either filter by your, your campus, you can filter by your unit, you can filter by division, organization, your UDO, your description. 
um, there are two tabs in this file, and I would suggest that you only really look at the valid UDO file. Um, because if it's invalid, it doesn't make a difference, you can't use it. It's just a, a listing of things that are no longer, um, that will no longer be available in the system. And finally, the third file I want to bring your attention to is the proposed cross-validation rules. Now, there are approximately um, 43 of them um, that is subject to change as people are reviewing them and feedback is coming in. Um, it's very easy. The file is very easy to read. It's also in Excel. You can filter on a, a rule name, a description, an error message, um, the, the segment values that are used, the segment value values um, that are in the CVRs. So let me take us back to our presentation. So um, what I would suggest, again, is to have these files open and available for your use as you're going through uh, transactions, whether it be in PeopleSoft, or you Marketplace, General Ledger, Projects. Okay? Okay, Sue, we have a question from the chat. On the website, there are two versions of cross-validation rules, current and proposed. Which do we use? Well, you actually, the current ones are, are the ones that were in the system since we went live. So if you were to get a message now, you could, you could look at those. These proposed ones will restrict um, the use of certain combinations even further than the ones that are currently in the system. So we've been live for 18 months, and if you've gotten an error message um, from the current violations, you probably have fixed them. But these proposed cross-validation rules that say April 2000 or 18, of 18 are, like I said, more restricted. And um, as soon as we go live with them, with them on July 1st, your old transactions, which may have passed the current UDO, um, the current CVRs, may not work in the, in, on July 1st. So, I hope I answered your question, and I hope it makes sense. Okay. Yep. Any more questions? Nope. Okay. All righty. So let's just take a quick look at, um, at the segments. Let's do a quick chart of accounts review of the segments. So there are 10 segments when transacting in PeopleSoft, Marketplace, um, the general ledger, you need to use all 10 segments. Unit, division, organization, location, fund type, business line, account, and activity. Inter-unit and future are, need to be, um, the fields need to be populated, but for this, um, mostly they'll uh, just default to the zeros. Okay, so quickly, what is a unit? Well, the unit is the highest level of reporting and represents schools, institutions, centers, and central. They are categorized by campus, New Brunswick, Newark, Camden, RBHS, and central. The division segment is used to group organizations. The organization segment is a business area that's dedicated to people in space. Location is for where you are providing the service. Your fund type identifies the funding source used to acquire goods and services. Your business line identifies the specific line of business or functional expense category. There are 10 functional, functional expense categories. They are instruction, research, healthcare, public service, academic and school support, student services, scholarships, operations and maintenance, general administration and institutional support, as well as, as well as auxiliary. The account segment identifies the nature of the transaction, such as the expense of the revenue. Some people refer to this segment as the natural account. 
And the, finally, the activity segment. This identifies an activity of high-level strategic initiatives that span across multiple units. So I'll show you here definitions again as I just went over them with you. Are there any questions on this segment? So there is. So to clarify the previous question, we use the current rules now and we will use the proposed rules or some version thereof after July 1st. Correct. Well, I actually think, Sue, if we go back to the dates to remember, right, we're talking about implementing these proposed rules. So on May 7th, rules will be implemented in Marketplace and PeopleSoft that are these proposed rules. Right, so we're going to start putting them in on May 7th. Um, you'll, you must be using valid UDO combinations on May 7th uh, in RU Marketplace and PeopleSoft. Um, for Oracle, we're going to put those rules into place for the Oracle system for monitoring only. So we're going to be, you know, educating everybody on what the valid UDOs are, what the chart of account strings are. Um, and then we'll be monitoring and reaching out to folks, hopefully making sure that they start using the correct, um, the correct segments, values. Again, um, that slide seven in this document when we go back to that, dates to remember. Yeah, we want you to start using the new rules and the new UDOs immediately. Okay, we have another question. I work in the expense module system mostly. Activity has never been used. Will this field be required in the expense module system? Nothing changes for you. In, in, um, when it interacts with um, Oracle, it'll populate the activity as zero, zero, zero. Okay, next question. What if the fund type or business line does not match the UDO string? Well, I'm going to show you how you would resolve that problem uh, further in the presentation. And it says, can you go back to the prior slide? The dates to remember slide. The seven. dates to remember slide? Is this the slide, Serena, that you wanted to see? And again, yes, these slides is. will yes. be. Yes, yes, thank you. These will be available at the end of the presentation, at the end of this week, excuse me. Okay, moving forward. Chart of accounts, valid unit division organization combination. Cross-validation rules, otherwise known as CVRs, control the combination of values you can create when selecting chart of account segment values. The cross-validation rule defines whether a value of a particular COA segment can be combined with specific values of other COA segments. A CVR also helps and enforces how accounting information is collected, categorized, and stored for reporting purposes. On May 7th, PeopleSoft and RU Marketplace will require that all new employee charging instructions and requisitions use a valid UDO. On July 1st, all systems will be updated to require the full chart string combination adheres to the full list of cross-validation rules, including UDO combinations. And I just want to mention that UDO combinations are also cross-validation rules. We just kind of separate them, but they're still cross-validation rules. So our goal is to reduce the UDO combinations to a more appropriate quantity and to reduce errors and reconciliation.
currently there are 6,000 UDO combinations that are active in our financial management system. We've identified 2,200 that are valid UDO combinations. These system controls will prevent the creation of new invalid UDO combinations, and they will also stop the use of invalid combinations being used that are already in the system. So we're asking you to review the valid and invalid UDO combinations that I showed you before on the University Controllers web website under COA um, initiatives. And we're asking that you begin using all valid UDO combinations on all your new transactions from today going forward. On May 7th, all units will be required to use only valid UDO combinations for RU Marketplace and PeopleSoft. We recommend using only valid UDO combinations for all transactions in the general ledger, expense reports, and project module. So someone may ask a question, what is the difference between a valid and an invalid UDO? Well, the valid UDOs were identified by each unit's business manager, chancellor's office, or central unit representative, and validated by the university controller's office and university's business office. You may ask, where can I find the list of the valid UDO combinations? Well, I showed you this in the beginning of my presentation. The list of the valid UDOs is posted on the Chart of Accounts page on the controller's website, uco.ruckers.edu slash chart accounts COA initiative. And you may ask, when should I start using the valid UDO combinations? We say now, right now. You should begin to use the valid UDO, UDOs immediately. Use the valid UDOs on new transactions, uh, new expense reports, new employee charging instructions, new requisitions, any current journals, etc. If you believe a UDO combination is valid but is not on the valid list, please reach out to your business manager and then work through your chancellor's office or central unit representative to get the combination on the valid list. Are there any questions? I don't see any, Sue. No, no questions. Okay, let's go forward. So let's take a look at an example that invokes a UDO CVR. That's a unit division organization cross-validation rule. So um, on the screen you see that combination highlighted in a box. So via uh, journal via spreadsheet, we put the, um, the 10 segments into uh, the journal entry and we try to process this journal entry and it comes back with um, an insert failed. So if you click on the insert failed button, you're going to come up with an error message. And the error message reads, CVR UDO, the organization value used is not valid for the unit division 840.6435. I just want to mention here that the error message that you see when doing a journal entry is the same error message you would see when processing an expense report. So, we want to go out and look at our valid UDO listing that's on the University Controller's website. And we're going to filter on unit. So we know that 840 was the unit used in the JV. We know the division is 6435 based on the error message that came up. And we're looking for the, um, the division of 6876 under the organization. And we do not see a value of 6876. We see 6883, 6897, but no 6876. So we decide that the value of 1157 would be appropriate for the journal entry. 
we put the 1157 in as the organization value and the journal processes successfully. Any questions? Okay, it says, will all the invalid UDO transactions be cleared up before July 1st? I can't read that. We are, we are then afraid balances will roll into invalid UDOs. So we do not have to clean up all of the balances before July 1st. The motto for this is to be clean in 19. So we're going to leave those balances in the invalid and it will roll to the invalid combination. We will then correct that centrally um, by um, moving it to the, to the right place. You can start cleaning up now for sure. Clean up as much as you can before July 1st. That is your, um, that's your decision. Any more questions? Don't be shy. Come on. Ask some questions. Okay. We're going to go on to um, cross-validation rules for non-UDO combinations. Okay. The following slides illustrate how to build a valid full chart string combination that complies with the new cross-validation rules. We encourage users to start using the full chart combination the full chart string combinations now because these rules will go into effect, into effect on the following dates. May 7th, cross-validation rules will be in monitor mode between May 7th and June 30th. Reports will be provided to show which transactions are in violation. This way we can get, we all can get accustomed to using the chart under the new rules. And then on July 1st, the new cross-validation rules will be in effect, and all users across all systems must adhere to these rules. Question. Will Central be reaching out to any units that will need balances cleared prior to moving them? No. 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 We, Central will not be. Again, you will hear from either uh, the invalid UDOs that have already been published or via the monitoring reports for the cost validation rules that you are violating, that we will try to give as much advance warning to folks um, when they're using invalid combinations. Uh, however, Central will not be doing anything um, to, to mandate that before the year ends. We will also be issuing the balances um, that are in violation. We will be producing those reports so that folks can see um, where their balances are that have, um, that have violations of the current rules in them. Okay. Back to our presentation. Uh, Question. So just want to clarify, it's up to the units themselves to clean up what they can before June 1st. Yes, yes, yes. We, we, we encourage actually for, you, for the units too. Um, if you can, um, do as much cleanup as you possibly can for any bad UDOs or any bad um, non-UDO CVR violations that are out there that have balances. Um, how do we do that? Well, um, okay. So the, then that will depend on where the violation is. So if it's a payroll transaction, uh, it may be coming through from employee charging instructions. If it's RU marketplace or POs, again, you'll have to go to those source systems to fix that. If it's hitting the general ledger and you run an account analysis report. Um, you know, to determine where the source was, where it came from, and if you have any questions, um, we recommend that you contact the controller's office, central um, controller's office to help you manage through that. 
and we'll also be providing additional guidance on, on these kinds of steps. Okay. All right, so let's look at, um, let's look in detail at a, a, one of the proposed CVRs that's out there, okay? Um, each rule, each CVR rule, or each cross-validation rule can be interpreted the same way when you're looking at um, the file, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna get you to understand how to read and interpret the CVR listing. So they'll have seven columns, and your first column will be rule name. And this is very important because the rule name um, will be the first part of any error message that you may receive. So for this particular rule that we're looking at, it is uh, CDR fund type to business line 09. So that means that there are eight CDRs for fund type and business line ahead of this particular one because this is the ninth one. So the description says this rule enforces that medical contracts for the state of New Jersey, fund types 145 and 390, can only be used in combination with health care and clinical business lines, 3,500 through 3,999. Fund types 145 and 390 can only use business line 99.99 when recording to a balance sheet account, which is your assets and liabilities. So if you were to say use a fund type 145 with a business line 3200, you would get this error message that says CVR fund type business line 09. The fund type value used is not valid with the business line value, okay? So these rules that we, that we have going into the system on July 1st, on July 7th for monitoring only, on July 1st for real, um, are inclusive. So what this rule is telling you is if you use this segment, which is fund type, and you're using a, valid, uh, 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 a value of 145 or 390, and you're gonna choose a business line. Your business line needs to fall between 3,500 and 3,999, or the business line 99.99 for balance sheet. Are there any questions on this screen? So I also wanted to clarify the answer on, on the how to, you know, how do we do that? Um, there is also, there'll be another webinar this afternoon, which is cross-validation rules for employee charging instructions, RU marketplace, and purchase order lines that I want to do a little quick commercial for. Um, you know, those will have more specific instructions with those individual systems in terms of what to do in order to fix those, um, those violations. Thanks. That's a great uh, Web WebEx to sign up to if um, you haven't done it already. It builds on, on this presentation. So, right now there are six categories, not in, uh, six categories of cross-validation rules, not including the UDO cross-validation rules. So currently we're proposing, um, if you use an account, then you have to use a unit and that's one rule. For business line to account, we have two rules proposed. Fund type to account, we have 21 rules. Fund type to business line, there are 10 rules proposed. Fund type to unit have six rules, and unit to business line have three. In this screen, we're gonna show you how um, to build a chart string combination that is valid. Okay, you can approach this two ways. You can either enter your chart string combination into the system and see if you get an error message, and if you don't, then you did something right, that's good. Or you can uh, use the rules of the road, and you can do this by starting with the the valid UDO list, make sure that the UDO that you're using is on the valid list, and then look at um, the, CV, the CVR listing. 
for the remaining segments, and they must comply with the cross-validation rules. So to build your valid chart string combination, you start with a valid UDO. You add your remaining segments and ensure all the segments comply with the cross-validation rules, and that gives you a valid chart string combination. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do some examples of non-UDO CDRs. First one we're going to look at is unit to fund type. Now just because you have a valid UDO combination doesn't necessarily mean that the unit you're using goes with the fund type. So in this section we're doing a manual journal and our unit is 100 and our fund type is 710, uh, 750. And we got an error message that says CVR fund type to unit 03. The fund value, fund type value used is not valid with this unit value. So then we want to go to our proposed CVR listing. And we want to read and see what it says. So it says, okay, here's your rule name. CVR fund type, unit 03. The description is the rule enforces that fund types 230, 300, 350, 750 through 899 can only be used in combination with central units. So if you're using the fund type, pardon me, if you're using the fund type 750, which we do on our journal, then the unit needs to be 900 or any value between 900 and 999. So we put the 900 in and process our entry and we get a confirmation that the entry accepted. But what if you know for sure that your unit is 100, you don't want to use unit 900? Okay, so let's go back and see what happens. So maybe it's the fund type that's wrong. So maybe we shouldn't be using 750. Maybe we should try changing that value to 150. After we change the value from 150, we see that it's an acceptable chart string and it was processed, the, the journal was processed. So here's another example of a CVR violation. And this we're going to look at business line to account. So we're going to do this example by a spreadsheet, journal spreadsheet. We put our information in, our unit, division, organization, location, fund type, business line, account, activity. And we try to upload it and it fails. So we click on the insert failed button and it gives us an error message of CVR, a business line to account 02. The business line value used is not valid for the account value. So then we go to our listing of proposed CVR values. We look up the rule name, CVR business line to account 02. The description says the rule enforces that default business lines 9991 through 9999 can only be used in combination with balance sheet accounts, your assets and liabilities. The business lines of 0000 through 9899 can only be used in combination with P&L accounts, your revenues and expenses. So in this example, we were using business line 9999. We changed the account value from 43, I'm sorry, 41,430 to 165. And the row, our JV successfully uh, uploaded. And for a final example of a CVR violation, 
let's look at fun typed business line. Um, let's see, I think we have some, let's wait and let's look at the questions first before we go to our final example and let's address the questions. Okay, we have a couple here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so, I got right. carried away. <laughs> so, um, I received error, error reports that my entire unit has violated CVR unit business line 03. The violation reads that my unit cannot use 6XX series business lines which meant that every transaction in FY18 was an error. The updated CVR rule reads differently than when I received the error messages, and my chancellor's unit rep told me they are tweaking some of the CVRs. How will I know if my unit is no longer in violation of the updated CVR? That's a great question. So the, if we step back for a little bit, we have a chart of accounts advisory group of which your chancellor unit rep is a, is a part of, or there are representatives from across the campuses um, on this team, and we've been um, working through these different cross-validation rules, and it is true. Um, the CBR unit business line 03 is one that we are um, considering modifying. It'll go through a change process um, and it will likely clean up. I would hold off on the unit, um, the CVR unit business line 03 for now until you hear more for us. That's a very specific question. It has to deal with all, um, how uh, auxiliary units can be used in combination with uh, cost pool business lines, which we are going to fix. Um, if the unit violating unit BL03 wants to know the status of the change and they are in New Brunswick, they should contact uh, the New Brunswick Chancellor's Office. And again, I guess that uh, just explains what I, what I just said um, for New Brunswick, just for on. Okay, um, when we have incorrect strings and salary entries in ECI, is the only way to fix it by SWR since we since GCA is inundated with SWRs and SWRs are taking a very long time to be processed, maybe we should wait until Central fixes it after July 1st. Please do not do that. Uh, do not wait until Central fixes it. Um, employee charging instructions, again, we will have a more detailed webinar later this afternoon. Um, however, um, ECIs, if they're not pertaining to a grant that don't, you know, or a sponsor project that don't meet the 90, that don't fall into the 90-day uh, rule, can go all the way back to the beginning of the fiscal year um, in PeopleSoft. Now, the SWRJ process really relates to the 90-day rule, um, and the only way to get that done is through uh, GCA. Um, we will monitor the volume of that to make sure that these things are processing, um, you know, as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, the next, the next question is: What happens if during a journal you are breaking multiple or CBR rules? Does it give you each rule that you broke, or just one at a time? The answer is just one at a time. Okay, Sue, so while they think about those answers <laughs> and, and more questions, questions. <laughs> okay. let's continue. So let's look at our final example of a CVR violation, and we're going to look at fun type to business line. This is, um, we're going to do this example as a project revenue journal. So we're putting in all our information, uh, our 10 segment string, and it's going to be for project 700-341, task 700. We try to upload it and it fails. So we click on the insert failed button, or the hyperlink I should say, and we get this error message. CVR fund type to business line 04. The fund type value used is not valid with the business line value. Now, I, I think that you're, you would all get a flavor that the, the message you get is really generic. Basically, it just tells you what segment doesn't go with what segment. Um, that's why you need to work with the file of proposed CVRs that is located out on the university controller's website. 
Okay, and if you have that at the ready, when you're doing your entries, you can quickly look up to see what values would be appropriate. So in this case, it says this rule enforces that plant fun fun types, 180, 610, 620, and 900 can only be used in combination with certain operation and maintenance business lines, 7,000 through 79.99. And then again, fun types 180, 610, 620, and 900 can only you only use business lines 99.99 when reporting to a balance sheet account. So when you're recording the assets and liabilities, you must use a business line of 99.99. In this case, we use um, fund type 180 and a business line of 80.45. So when we change our business line to 78.16, we see that the uh, journal was successfully imported. So in conclusion, the things that this presentation went over were our uh, chart of accounts initiative background. We, we reviewed the chart of accounts segments, where you can find them, which is on the uco.ruckers.edu slash chart accounts COA initiative. Um, URL, and uh, we went over the definitions of what each segment means. We went over valid UDO organization combinations, um, where to find them, again at the bottom of the screen, the uco.ruckers.edu website, and um, we gave you some information on how to request in the UDO combination. So just to reiterate that, if you feel that you have a UDO uh, combination that is not on the valid list and you think it, it needs to be on the valid list, you need to work with your business manager through your, your chancellor's office or your central unit rep to get it onto the new list. And cross-validation rules. Again, where to find them? You go out to the website at the bottom, uco.ruckers.edu and how to interpret them and how to understand how to use them and how they work. Okay, so uh, Sue, I'll just jump in here for a second just to um, uh, remind everybody, you know, we have uh, a series, we have had a series of open forms. We have a chart of accounts advisory committee that meets weekly. Um, we're launching these webinars and, and we really appreciate um, uh, everybody's attendance to these. And I, I did want to iterate, you know, this is part of a multi-phase approach into, you know, getting us um, to work within the system uh, in an easier way. And so, uh, you know, although we're putting some of these rules to make it uh, a little bit easier to transact, please know that uh, the controller's office um, is working to provide other types of education, uh, support and guidance, as well as policies and procedures around, you know, what these cross-validation rules, um, you know, are supposed to enforce that, for example, only certain units are supposed to do certain uh, business lines, et cetera. And we do appreciate um, we're trying to get to implementing these rules before the year end so we can be clean in 19, um, but that there's more to come in terms of education, support, policies, and documentation uh, to, to uh, make it easier. Okay, um, I will come back to the chat slides or the chat room here. Um, Brian says, uh, <laughs> well, shout out to Brian Boxer. For, uh, it's great that various systems will automatically tell us when we commit a CBR violation. Thank you for making sure Oracle has that functionality. Um, thank you very much for that. We do appreciate it. Um, uh, more to come on that, uh, for sure. Uh, what is the remediation if a project setup is in fact breaking a CBR rule? So there was a communication a, a few weeks back just specific to 
um, the project setups. We did receive a lot of those back, Sue, and I think based off of running some of those through, we had some cross-validation rule errors. Why don't you talk people through that? Okay. So if, if one of your uh, project setups uh, broke a cross-validation rule, uh, Mindy Rubin, which I'm going to show you who we are, um, contacted you and asked for either a new UDO val um, combination or said, you know, this business line doesn't work with this fund type or whatever. So she had reached out to you to uh, correct the setup. There will be a mass upload of all the corrections to projects to make sure that um, pro the project setups will not violate um, the CVR rules when we go live July 1st. It says, who fixed the journal that was processed by Central that has incorrect CVR? I, I'm, I'm not. You know the journal, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Uh, we, the, yeah, that one seems a little more, a little more specific. If you want to write uh, to the uh, email box, uh, we can handle that one offline. It doesn't sound like this. Okay, just to clarify, on May 7th, invalid UDOs cannot be accepted by SideQuest and PeopleSoft, but you can still do a journal entry with an invalid UDO. Technically, yes. Um, technically, you are correct. However, we do recommend that you do use valid combinations starting now. Um, that was a conscious decision. We didn't want people to not be able to transact, um, you know, and then we wanted to give time to clean up uh, between now and the end of the year. So on the screen you see our wonderful pictures and our contact information. Um, I would suggest that the email address on the bottom, coa at finance.ruckers.edu, is really the best um, place to send any kind of questions or inquiries that uh, it is manned all the time, people are looking at it, and uh, we will get back to you. If we can't um, answer your question initially, we will either um, copy you on the email to the department that we're sending it off to that can fix your problem or answer your problem. If we need to research it, we will let you know that we received your, your question and that you need to give us a little time to research. Okay. okay, more questions are coming in. Is the fund type specific to a project, or can different fund types be used with a different task for the project? For example, can an endowment project, 6XXX, have a fund type on 220 on task 600 and fund type 700 on task 601? Um, we would have to actually um, send your question off to the endowment team to respond to that, and what we'll do, uh, just as a, a point of a note, all the questions that are coming in through the chat will be listed on our website with the presentation, so we will make sure that all the questions have answers to them, and we will get you an answer to this question. Next where, question. Where do we obtain the CVR monitoring report to correct the bad transactions? Uh, yeah, we're going to be communicating on Monday, um, and there may be four different types of reports that will be going out um, uh, that will have this kind of mon monitoring. The, the reports include, um, in, you know, where we have had POs with violations, um, where we've had new RECs with violations. Uh, new transactions uh, with violations, and then balances by fiscal year with violations. Those are the four reports that will, will be coming out on Monday. Ah, here we go. Someone from our endowment team has answered the question. Um, so I'll, re I'll repeat the question. Is, is the fund type specific to a, pro a project, or can a different fund type be used with different tasks for a project, for example, can an endowment project starting with six have a fund type of 20, uh, 220 and a task 
600 and a fund type of 700 on task 601. And our endowment team has answered the question. It says the answer to the question is yes. You can have a fund type of 220 on a task of 600 and a fund type of 700 on a task of 601. Thank you, endowment team. Thank you, endowment team. Okay, we have another one. Oh, that's Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Um, Where will you be able to get this PowerPoint for this webinar? It's going to be on the UCL website by the end of the week. Um, it will be under Chart of Accounts Initiative, under Resources. We have one more question. Coming Another in. question coming in. Working in central administration, we often do journal entries where we record transactions for other departments using the information that the department provided us. Fail. Fail. We get pushback saying the information they provided us is correct. Is there is there a listing of financial business managers to contact for UDOs? Yes, there are. Um, there's a listing out on the uh, University Controller's website under the Chart of Accounts Initiative under Resources. Um, I'm not sure of the exact title, but it does say Business Manager Contacts. I may be off a little bit, but there is a link. <clears throat> I think so. Oh, okay. I'm getting um, I'm getting confirmation. We don't have a list of all the business and managers, but we do have a list of the um, chancellor's office and the central unit rep that you can contact and they will uh, work with you to get your business manager involved. Okay, I think uh, we're done then with the, with the chats and the questions and answers. Again, I want to thank everybody for joining us. And then um, also to remind everybody that the surveys will be sent out to individuals who registered for the webinar. Um, if you did register as a conference room, if you would be kind enough to send an email to Renee Hagwood um, so that we can send individual surveys and we can also provide folks um, with credit for attending the webinar, we will do that. Um, and then at the very end, of course, the survey for anybody we didn't touch uh, via those emails uh, will be available on the controller's website. And I, another commercial for this afternoon, I believe it's at 3.30, uh, 1.30. <laughs> I was just keeping my team on their toes. 1.30 um, today, the chart of accounts, cross-validation rules for employee charging instructions, RU Marketplace, and purchase order lines will also be available. Thank you so much for your time and attendance. We are signing off. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, everyone.